Have you guys heard of bottom of the page cam guys? Yes. Yeah. You go to the biggest camshaft in the bottom of the catalog? <laughs> yeah, that's all of oh, us. Yeah. Well, Dulcich and I are definitely bottom of the page carburetor guys. Oh. We yeah. always go for too much CFM, but also always the double pumper and always, if we have a choice, the one with no carburetor choke horn. Remember when I had the 1000 CFM Holly yeah. HP with no choke on my mild 318? Yes. It ran I great, did. didn't it? It ran great. <laughs> I know. Well, I think bottom of the page carburetor guys are gonna really benefit from this episode. I'm hoping this makes a difference. I really wanna find out if I need to change my ways and go to the vacuum secondary or the choke horn. Oh my gosh, you're going to repent, Freiburger? It's possible, I might convert you too. <sighs> no, I'm too far gone, bro. <laughs> the first one we're gonna run is the heretofore unheard of. Oh no, don't tell me. Vacuum oh. secondary. Oh. <laughs> my favorite. People have a perception that double pumper is race and vacuum secondary is not, so is it gonna make the same power as a double pumper? I say yes. Here's our final power numbers for the vacuum secondary brawler carburetor. 516.7 pound-feet of torque and 491 horsepower. Steve, will this do better? Yes. Yes? I think so. Well, I'm curious not only about the horsepower of the double pumper, but also how it might end up jetted differently than the vacuum secondary. Well, I think it will. I yeah. think that's a foregone conclusion. I think that might be a big thing that we learn on this episode. Yeah. I'm ready. I do believe it made more power than the vacuum secondary. I believe you are right. I kind of feel, you know, warm and fuzzy inside. I knew you're bonded to the double pumper carburetor. I was, and I was bracing myself for it making the same power. And you realize you're the one that turned me onto the double pumper as being a vastly superior unit. Yeah, 25 years ago. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Let me start off <laughs> with the power situation. The red lines here are the double pumper or mechanical secondary carburetor. The black lines are the vacuum secondary. Our new power numbers are 523 pound-feet of torque and all the way up at 514 horsepower. The massive question is, why would the mechanical secondary make that much more power when the butterfly and the Venturi size and the booster is all the same. And that's what we just spent an hour and a half struggling with off camera <laughs> to try and figure out. Okay, so investigating why it made more power. First, let's look at the airflow between the two. Mechanical secondary. Oh, Huh? <laughs> they flow exactly the same air. Right. Why? Because they have the same throttle body, <laughs> the same butterflies, the just, same venturi. Just the way you picked them. Exactly, all that. So they flow the same air. So how could it possibly make more power? And that's when we started looking at the fuel flow. So let's compare fuel in pounds per hour through the primary and secondary side of both carburetors. So red is mechanical secondary, black is vacuum secondary. There's two things that you need to notice here. One is look how far apart the vacuum secondary is. The mechanical is closer, but the other thing, I guess it's three things you need to look at, is look how much less fuel is flowing through the secondary of the vacuum secondary versus the mechanical secondary. And this is where the GoPro came in. Why is that, Dave? <laughs> well, it was funny because Dulcich and I were in there thinking and thinking and thinking, and we came up with the answer at Boom. the exact same moment. And here it is. What does the vacuum secondary carb lack in the back half that you've got in a double pumper? Accelerator pump discharge nozzles, right? The key is in the name, double pumper. So let's explain that with this other double pumper carburetor, not the one that we just ran. You can see that it has a primary and secondary squirter. The thing that happens that Dulcich and I just 
remembered at the last second is that fuel siphons out of the squirter when you're at wide open throttle. At and higher RPM especially. Especially, and it starts low and goes high. The, the more air speed, the more it pulls fuel out of there. Yep. On a race or a performance style carburetor, you don't, you're not that concerned with what's happening between 2,500 and 3,500 RPM, where the vacuum secondary, I believe, that you are. Right. And so kind of what the mechanical secondary disadvantage is is how the curve kind of changes. It starts out very lean and, and tends to head rich. Because when you snap it open <laughs> and it's fully open, you yeah. don't have the airspeed to pull fuel like out of the we, secondary until like we talked about you get with to high vacuum. RPM. Yep. Although the vacuum has the plate in the way, which speeds up the air, which pulls more fuel. Yeah. That's why you see carburetors in race applications, and I mean true race applications, calibrated for the RPM range they run in. A lot of that other stuff is just not important. Don't care. You can't make them run everywhere. Well, the final conclusion on the test of Vacuum secondary versus double pumper is that the double pumper actually makes more horsepower, probably because of distribution, but we're thinking more and more about the vacuum secondary being what we would really like to have on the street, even if it's giving up some power numbers yeah. just for drivability. Agreed. Boom. Yeah. The next thing that I want to do is compare carburetors with a choke horn to carburetors without, like the original Holly HP smooth super trick. Yeah. Does this flow more air? Does this make more power? And I want to do it with and without air filters because I think the air filter is going to encroach on this and create a problem. Now we're gonna do the same two tests with the race version of the carburetor that has no choke horn. And now I get to install an air filter. This time what we did was a lot of thrashing. We ran both the choke horn carburetor and the smooth top carburetor naked with nothing on top of it. And we ran them both with filters on them. And we ran them both with the air hat on them so that we could measure the CFM flow through them. And uh, through all of that and a lot of jetting and fiddling and retesting and rebaselining and everything, here's the bottom line. The smooth top race carburetor actually makes more power. You can see it there in red, whereas the choke horn carburetor is in black. The interesting thing is that we saw that the airflow through both of them was the same. Yeah. Yep. And that's what sent us in circles all the time. We sit and go, why? Because we want to know why, we want to tell you why. You know, I, I, for me, Personally, when the airflow is the same, we know it's not the pump. It's it's the same. All the carburetors are the same. It moves the, the same amount the same. of air. The yeah. It's quality of air. My theory, see if you buy this, okay. is that you're getting turbulence around the choke horn instead of a nice smooth entry. That's the only thing I can think of that would flow the same amount of air, but be less efficient and make less power. So that's the whole story, and it took us a long time, a lot of testing off camera, but that's what we do here. We go through every single little horsepower, every jet, every tweak, because we want to give you the best information we can every single time on Engine, Engine Masters. Masters.